Hey everybody, and welcome to another Hands Occupied video tutorial. I'm Heidi, the blogger and knitwear designer behind the blog Hands Occupied, and today I'm going to show you how to do a kitchen or stitch bind off. So that's when you graft the last few stitches of your project as the bind off of the work. If you're here looking for a vanilla like starter kitchen or stitch or grafting tutorial, I have that on this channel as well. Just search the channel for grafting or kitchen or stitch and you'll find it. Let's get started. So as you can see, I have the last, in this case, 12 stitches of a mitten distributed evenly on two needles. I knit these on double pointed needles, so I just distributed them on two of my double pointed needles and set the others aside. I've also got a tapestry needle here threaded with the tail of my yarn that's been cut. I have this cut a little short just so it all fits in the frame, so you'll want a little bit of a longer tail when you work on this, but just FYI, I did a shorter tail to make the demo go a little faster. So I've got my stitches distributed on my needle, and I'm working right-handed, so I'm working this way in the round, and the tail of my yarn is coming off of the needle farthest from me, okay? So now what we're going to do is our two setup stitches uh, to graft our ends of our project together. So first on the needle closest to us, we're going to sew that tail through the first stitch purlwise, drawing the tail through. Then on the far needle, we're going to sew through that one knitwise. So running the sewing needle through that loop as if to knit. So we did purl and knit, and we haven't taken anything off of either of our needles just yet. So for the rest of this grafting action, the thing to remember is knit, purl, purl, knit. That's, how, that's the rhythm to get into. And let me show you what knit, purl, purl, knit means. So, we're back working with this first loop closest to us, and we're going to run our tapestry needle through that loop knitwise, so as if to knit, and sweep that loop off the end of our needle. Then, still working on this same needle closest to us, we're going to run the tapestry needle through the next loop as if to purl, drawing the, t the tail through. Then working on the far needle, we are going to do, so we did knit purl. Now we're going to do purl knit. So running the tapestry needle through the first loop on the far knitting needle, we're going to run that through purl wise and sweep that loop off the end of the needle and then run the needle through the second loop knit wise, drawing the tail through. Let me show you that again. And don't you don't have to pull this tail super duper tight. Just draw the tail through. So once again, knit, sweeping that loop off the end, run the tapestry needle purlwise through the second loop on the needle closest to you. Purl, run the needle purlwise through that first loop, sweeping it off. And then the next loop, run the tail all the way through, knitwise. Curl, knit. And now we have just two stitches left, so all we have to do is the two sweeping stitches. So knit and sweep off the needle, purl and sweep off the needle, and then you're done. Now this is a little bit sloppy because I was talking and demoing while I did it, but I can show you what this looks like once it's done all nice and good, good, done nice and well with good technique and it's been blocked. So this is what that same number of stitches looks like when it's all done together. So it looks ultimately seamless even though it is 
actually seamed. That's why the Kitchener stitch is so great. Um, I love this bind off for mittens and socks and about a million other things. The Kitchener stitch is a stitch I use constantly. So if you like this video, give us a like. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. And if you like what you saw and want to get your hands on new videos as soon as they come out, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.